mice, which is kind of the way people have trained mice in the field in the past, with uh, the circle corridor non-rewarding and the leaf corridor rewarding, and we train them for two weeks. And then we have this unsupervised cohort, which runs through this virtual reality in closed loop, so it's running, uh, dictates the speed of the corridor, um, but it never receives any reward. So it's just having visual experience. So first for the supervised group, I'll show you that these mice do in fact learn the task. So they're able to discriminate between these two natural images. So before, before learning, their lift responses, before the reward are pretty similar between the two corridors. But then after learning, they decrease their licking greatly in the circle corridor and are mainly licking in the leaf corridor only. That makes sense so far? Okay, so now what we wanna know is um, what happens to these, the neural activity in these mice over learning. So for that, we uh, need to record neurons. And so we use uh, this two photon random access microscope, which allows us to record a really large field of view. So this is over four millimeters, uh, over primary visual cortex and higher order visual areas. And we're also, we're using um, temporal multiplexing with a laser. So we're able to capture two depths simultaneously. So these are two depths in primary visual cortex and, and higher order visual areas. Um, and this is just a zoom in of what the imaging looks like, each of those little neurons lighting up with their fires. Sorry, do, do you know which layers we need to respond to? Yeah, it's like upper layer two, three, and then like lower layers two, three, kind of. Or you could say layer two over here. Yeah. Um, and so this is this is primary visual cortex here, and then we're gonna have these higher order visual areas too, which I'll tell you about in a bit that you get in using the, the leaf map. Um, and so we're able to record on average around 50,000 neurons per mouse. Um, and this is going at a rate of three hertz. So we get a new sample every 300 milliseconds and we use SweetQP to detect these neurons. We don't circle all of these neurons by hand, fortunately. So each of these different colors is one of these neurons. And so we sum the pixels in each of the little disks you see on, at each time point. And that gives us the activity of the neuron at that time point. And then we get these neuron traces for each neuron across the experiment. And that's what we're gonna be working with going through. Before. So the first thing we asked was um, kind of where are these, uh, what are the stimulus preferring neurons in the brain and kind of where are they? So we wanted to see if there are neurons that, uh, that code for circle one and leaf one. So we, uh, we defined the selectivity index, this D prime, uh, as the difference between the mean <coughs> of the neurons response in the leaf one corridor uh, versus the circle one corridor divided by the standard deviation of their responses across corridors. And so a neuron with a high D prime, for example, for a circle, has responses that look like this. In the, so the circle trials are the red trials here, and then the leaf trials are the blue trials here. And so we always, um, yeah, so the selectivity, the D prime, we always do this on training trials, and then we look at the responses on, on test trials, so going forward. So that these are test trials. Um, and then so here's some example leaf one selective neurons. And so you can see these neurons have activity in the leaf one trials, but not so much in the circle one trials. And so now we want to ask where are these stimulus selective neurons in the brain? And so we wanted, we looked um, before and after learning and we're gonna look across. So here's primary visual cortex here. And then there are these kind of lateral visual areas. The, these areas here are more anterior, they're kind of, um, also considered to be part of posterior parietal cortex in mice. And then there's these medial areas that are also next to um, retrospinal cortex here that we're gonna be looking at. And so for the supervised mice, what happens? So um, before learning, there are lots of um, selective neurons, in, mainly in D1 for this, that are discriminate between the two quarters. But then after learning, a lot of, there's a lot more selective <coughs> neurons specifically in these medial areas um, that are that are near retrospinal cortex. And what happens in the unsupervised mice, so these mice never receive re rewards. We saw that there was also this increase in particular in this medial area in the number of neurons coding for the stimuli. So even though there were no rewards, the visual experience changed the selectivity of these neurons in these medial visual areas. We also saw in these anterior areas, like these more posterior parietal cortex areas, that there was an increase in selective neurons in the supervised mice, but not in the unsupervised mice, um, suggesting they're associated with the reward learning part of the task. 
So we can summarize this uh, data by making a plot of the percentage of selected neurons before and after learning, and supervised in green, unsupervised in, in yellow. And so you can see there, it's pretty similar in V1, but then in, medial, in the medial area, you can see this big increase in selected neurons in both supervised and unsupervised mice. Um, so we think this area is implicated in unsupervised learning. And then the anterior area, we mainly see an increase in neurons in supervised mice, so we think this area is implicated in supervised learning. Make sense so far? So yes? Are these changes driven by the, the primary visual areas there are, or is it driven by other factors? That's a good question, we don't know. So we, I mean, it could also be this learning could implicate, uh, it could be hippocampus involved in, in this learning too, so we don't know um, the answer to that. This is basically just before and after learning. It, there, there seems to be definitely an increase in selected neurons in these areas. So I think you know, change your visual area. Yeah, so the majority of neurons just are responding, and so we'll get into this question of is the learning visual or spatial? Um, the neurons are responding to specific places because these neurons are quite sparse in their firing. They fire to very specific visual stimulus features is what we think is happening. So they're firing only in one place because that's where their favorite visual feature is. Um, but yeah, this is an important question of kind of like, it, is, it, is it visual? Like are they responding to a visual aspect in a specific place or are they responding to how far they are in the corridor? And so that's actually something we, we ask next. Um, so are the activities filtered for the time window not uh, receiving any rewards? So are there some rewards that would be that would be given to those so are they only visual sites? Yeah, uh, so that's a good question. So the reason why we did this like unsupervised cohort, they never lick and never get rewards. So because we see changes in both the unsupervised and supervised mice in this medial area, we think that's the area that's in, that's involved in the unsupervised learning. So for the cohort we supervise, yeah. um, have we filtered the area that is only selected for the visual stimulus, not for the view? Yeah, so you're, you're right. This is just selected for visual stimuli. We could also find reward selective neurons mm -hmm. and We'll do, a, we'll look a little bit of that more in, in later in the talk, it's a good question. Yeah, so this is just visual selectivity in the reward corridor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so for example, uh, in the circuit, circuit uh, is, is the similar picture across a uh, trial? Ah, uh, that's a good uh, question, yes, it's the same corridor every single time. Uh, We're gonna not the similar one, just the same. Exactly, exactly the same. same. Oh. We're gonna do new texture exemplars next, uh, actually. Yeah, that's a good question. Do you still have another? Yeah. Same question? No, no. Okay. What, what, what are the, what's the stimulus for you, the cognitive stimulus? So this is stimulus is, okay, well actually I'm gonna show it here, this is a subset of it, is this, is a, this corridor here, and basically this is one quarter of it, and so it's four times this length. That's the stimulus of the mouse. So it's just looking at? It's, yeah, it's running, but yes, it's just this, this visual stimulus, yeah. There's no other stimuli other than that random chunk that, that comes in. So there's a difference in behavior so between the mouse and the mice stop in one of the cohorts. So yes, the mice stop when they receive the reward in the rewarded case. Um, but they, we've looked at comparisons of we've done this discrimination uh, by keeping running speed fixed, like in places where the running speed is fixed for both supervised and unsupervised, and we also see these same changes. Mm -hmm. So it is a good question. We did try to control control for that. So, so in the plot before, you show the text for each visual position. So yeah. It's probably not a plot for the fact that there are no stop. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's, okay, so one trick that Lynn did, sorry, I, I'm going back, is that he has the reward at a random time. So there's a random time they're stopping each corridor, so we're kind of controlling for this. There's not one rewarded stimulus, and there's not one rewarded position. So that kind of helps for this kind of control. That we always, we always have trials where the mouse is running through the leaf, and not stop that we can compare to the unsupervised mice that are running through. Uh, yes, you want a question? Yeah. Is there a reason why you choose the, the kind of circle and leaf feature for visual stimuli? Because in other paper, they use simple visual stimuli, like uh, stripes or just dots. 
Yeah, that's another great question. Yeah, I didn't bring this up. So we, and we actually, so these are complex stimuli and we also make sure that they're actually Fourier spectrum matched. So you can't just use a, like a single layer neural network to discriminate them. So we did that kind of on purpose to make them like slightly more complicated. So it's just like not a simple uh, filter could, could do the task. And we just, we want to see if the mice could learn it and use it. But, and also I'll just say in, in mice, at least we find that natural images uh, elicit more activity and more reliable activity than just ratings or dots. So it's another reason that we think that they're more salient to the mice. Is the benefit the real um, structure of it? Or is it? No, that's another great. Yeah, it's random. So it's randomly, we circle for the loop to just in random. All right. So um, the next thing we looked at was. Um, kind of getting into, are they, is this visual learning or spatial learning? The first question we asked was to try to present new exemplars of these textures. So they've always been saying we've seen the same leaf in the same circle. And now we present uh, a new leaf and a new circle. And these stimuli are presented without any reward. Um, so the mice can't learn any valence associated with them. And so for this, so we have like two kind of hypotheses. So if the mice are doing visual generalization, then they would also not lick to circle two because they don't think circles are rewarding, but they would lick to leaf two because they maybe think leafy places are rewarding. Alternatively, if the mice are doing a kind of learning a spatial map, they might think just this special leaf space place, leaf one is rewarding and all these other places are not rewarding. Does anyone want to guess what the mice do? Who thinks the mice visually generalize? Okay. Who thinks the mice use a spatial map? There's gonna, well, yeah, so for, for this task, we find actually that they do visual generalization. So we, we sh this is the licking in the generalization session. So this is the trials and time. This is the time of the gray, the gray period, but this, this is the time in the corridor where we've sorted these trials by the time of the sound cue. And you can see that um, basically there's no licking in the circle corridor, in the two circle corridors, but the mice are licking in this new leaf corridor that they haven't seen before, um, just like they're looking in the leaf corridor, the original leaf one corridor. So behaviorally, um, oh yeah, so the, here's the summary of this across all mice. Um, basically they're looking less in the circle two corridor, and then they're looking more in this leaf two corridor, similar to how they look in leaf one. So the mice are doing this visual generalization in terms of their behavior. Now we wanted to know what the neural responses look like, if maybe the neurons that respond to leaf one also respond to leaf two, for example. So there's visual generalization. So we have, um, we're gonna take these neurons again um, with a high D prime, so the neurons that prefer leaf one and circle one. And we're gonna 